Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, where wealth strategies and investment wisdom collide, featuring your distinguished host and certified financial planner, Bart Zanbergen. Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, a showcase for wealth strategies and investment wisdom that's essential for our evolving world. I am your recovering cold person here, so everyone just be safe. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I always say that because I know my voice sounds different. Um, Paul, and as you know, and the listeners, the show is primarily a financial-based show, but at times we like to incorporate and mix in lifestyle and fun things along with business. And so I'm very, very happy to have our guests today, Will and Courtney Alovis. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Great to have you. So you guys have a shop that is an icon that everyone in Orange County knows except for Paul. But for me, what was I doing here? Where have I been? And it's Sugar and Spice. Now, tell me how you got involved with that. Well, my mom uh, is the third owner, and about five years ago, she was diagnosed with dementia. So we we left our careers in L.A. Uh, Will's a script supervisor. I was a makeup artist in TV. And we moved down to run the shop and keep it going for her. Wow. So we took over. It was fun. So you were living in L.A. and so moved everything yeah. everything down? Moved everything within a, a month. Yeah. It was a quick decision. Wow. Pretty pretty yeah. radical change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will say. And what is it? Everybody's tweeting instantly. What is it? You're oh, t- you oh, tell geez. everybody. I'm sorry. For the, uh, <laughs> we, having lived here, know exactly what it is. But there's others like, Paul, please tell everybody what Sugar and Spice is. Sugar and Spice is the original frozen banana shop on Balboa Island since 1945. Wow. 1945. Wow. Do you see the banana reference, Paul, now? Early no, in the I get it. <laughs> off, I get it. Off, off mic. <laughs> um, so um, tell it. Tell us a little bit more about the shop. What you're, what you're serving, and what's yeah. happening? Sure, sure. Well, we have, uh, as Court was saying, we have frozen bananas, but we also have uh, Balboa bars, which are ice cream bars. Uh, we do uh, all sorts of ice creams and shakes and sundaes and all sorts of dessert things. Uh, what makes our place unique is that the bananas and the the bars, we uh, we dip them in people's choice. Uh, they can choose between four mm-hmm. different dips. We have a, a, a classic a chocolate, a dark chocolate, we have a cherry or a peanut butter dip, and then we also have like 15 different toppings and drizzles that people can, you know, we can put it mm-hmm. on for them. And it's fun. It's like very customizable, and it's a fun experience. They get to, we make them fresh right in the window when people order them. So it's like a fun thing. It's like definitely a, a great family type place. Oh, yeah. Right I have the main seen street. this place. I just didn't know the name. <laughs> okay. I just knew it as the, yeah, it's like, it is, it, is it right over by the fun zone or my no, right? no. on Balboa Island, not the peninsula. As you cross oh, over, yeah. as you cross yeah. right over, over there, okay. Main Street. Well, I what a cool idea! I love all this stuff. Why why aren't I uh, right there right now? Right? Or why are they not samples? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going right. to go there, but I okay. Know. All right. So, honest answer: have, have you gained any weight? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we no well wow. no just during Self-dispo. the holidays. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, just during the holidays, we kind of let it go a bit from uh, starting Halloween, Halloween <laughs> up until a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so here's my little fun fact that I teased you guys with before. Okay. Um, so my wife grew up on the island. Her name is awesome. Tina. And not only apparently was she a frequenter, but she was once behind the bar. She was awesome! Oh my gosh! Wow! Yeah. What year? What, do you know what years? Uh, she probably wouldn't. Uh, so okay. many years ago, we're probably okay. then the thirty years ago ish. Okay, so yeah. be- probably Betty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's amazing. I that's, love that. You know, it's amazing how many people we meet who come to the shop. Yeah. Who say, you know, this was my first job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we've met like at least a hundred people so many. since we've been. Are you, you know, serious? Working. Oh yeah. And wow. the, oh, absolutely. And uh, it's it's amazing. And what's also amazing is that it was their first job and that they still have really, really strongly great feelings about yeah. it. Yeah. And they want to come back and they want to bring their families and bring their kids and bring their grandkids. Yeah. So it's uh, it's kind of unusual in that in that regard. That's awesome. We'd, we'd love yeah. to I'm meet Tina. Meet Tina. <laughs> well, I, now we need to come by. Yes. <laughs> um, so I, I think you, you downplayed it a bit, Courtney, but I know you both had incredible Hollywood careers. Will, you're a script supervisor for, I mean, not just little shows, but you know, yeah. Empire, CSI Miami, New York, um, Law and Order. 
um, and Courtney, a makeup artist for you know, some of the great celebrities, some of my favorite, Jerry Seinfeld, Jason Alexander, Brooklyn Decker, mm-hmm. Donnie and Osmond. Donnie, I was, wow. Yeah, I was Donnie <laughs> Osmond's personal for seven years. Wow. So it was really great uh, when he did Pyramid Game Show and then from there, seven oh, years yeah. out from that. So tell us fun. a little bit about that. That's that's exciting stuff. We don't hear that every day. But. It was it was great. I um, Yeah, I started out... Um, in the 90s as a makeup artist and I first job was at ABC on General Hospital and Mr. Belvedere oh, yeah. and snowballed into the last show being in 2013 um, I worked with New Girl and The Voice kind of day played with wow. that and, and Donnie. And that's not like a like a nine to five. You don't just check in, no. check out, right? It could be any time, any... Usually yeah. we're the first ones in the last ones out yeah. and um, 16 hour days most wow. of the time. 16, wow. 17 hour days. And you run out between takes and do the fresh yes. up and <laughs> touch them up. Do it in the morning and then all day touching them up and it's a lot of fun. It yeah, was, it was fun. Yeah. So I'm coming to come back and ask you for okay. a great. So think of a great story, like one of your great. You, and it'd be great to have the celebrity name, but if you can't, okay. don't. Okay. All right, and then Will uh, tell us about your previous life. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I I started off uh, like 30 years ago in entertainment, and uh, I, I started off in New York doing uh, everything from. Uh, uh, production design and uh, I worked my way up from being a production assistant uh, up to doing all sorts of art department stuff uh, but then when I came to LA I, I was a prop master for a bunch of years and then for like the last 15 years of my career I was a script supervisor on t- uh, TV shows and, and movies and it was a lot of fun it was it was a, a really great you know lifestyle every day was kind of a new adventure and uh it was a lot of hours uh but it was really gratifying you know uh it's you know it's funny because it was a lot of hours and like what we do now is also a lot of hours i I don't know that we work any less necessarily but it's really nice for me because we used to be court was doing her makeup thing i was doing like say my script supervisor thing and we'd just be in different worlds and then, yeah, we'd meet up at home later on. But now, <laughs> yeah, so now instead of being apart working for 16 hours a day, we're together, you know, we're together. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a, a lot of marriages, maybe that wouldn't be the best thing. But, but for right. us, it really yeah. works. We yeah. have a lot of fun. It's like we kind of felt like we had a lot of lost time to make up for. Yeah. And uh, it's been a it's been a good time. That's so great. Now, um a script supervisor. I assumed it was a, a that's writing. Do, does that mean you wrote? Or no, that's no. Different? It, it's it's actually it's not a writing job. It's yeah. it's a a set job, and uh, you're sort of like the liaison. You're, you're like the you're sort of like the presence of post production on set. But but the the job has a lot of facets. One, you're in charge of like all continuity. Like even though every department is responsible for their own continuity, uh, your eyes are on everything and you're the last line of defense you have so to explain you, what continuity oh continuity is, is okay so uh, outside of the of the world i know what it is but everybody's given that uh deer in the headlight look here yeah. okay thanks paul um yeah so continuity is like you here's the thing if continuity is good in a film or a tv show you don't even notice it but what you do notice is if somebody messes up and if somebody in the scene is wearing say you know a red hat and then suddenly they cut away and they cut back and they're wearing a green hat <laughs> yeah. you know i mean for stuff like i mean that that's yeah. a really bold example yeah. but it could be that it could be just simply you know they started off with the, the glass in their left hand now it's in their right hand right. the glasses are on the glasses are off the yeah. eyeglasses uh all that stuff also uh you're in charge of uh continuity for a screen direction yeah. so that we know when characters are talking to one another mm-hmm. that you know one is looking one way the other is looking the other way so that the magic of editing it appears they're actually having a conversation yeah. uh so this is a lot of facets and it's uh it's a very detail oriented job uh and it, it's just a, a lot of you're, work but also fun you're like an air traffic controller yeah. Pretty much, That's it. pretty much, and <laughs> yeah. simultaneously, you're taking notes on every take. You're timing every take. Yeah. You're doing notes on every single thing that goes on constantly, <laughs> and it's uh, it's it's a pretty responsible. It sounds super yeah. stressful. Yeah. It was. It, it is very stressful, yeah. but I, I really thrived at it. It was really. Uh, yeah. it, it wasn't something that people would have naturally thought I would have gravitated towards. Yeah. But it really, uh, it, it felt like, you know, you were always juggling. You had a lot of balls in the air constantly, yeah. and you just had to know where everything was, you know, yeah. at once. Did you both meet on set? 
We met through a friend of, yeah, I was doing makeup for a show, and yeah. the woman that I was doing each week her makeup for yeah. she, was married to his uh, best friend at the time. Okay. And they, she set us up. All with, right. Yeah. Well, well, we have something in common. I met my wife through her makeup artist also. Really? Oh, awesome. How yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. You're we kidding. Got, yeah. Got, yeah. No, actually, I'm not. Wow. That's, <laughs> we have got to, <laughs> That's really funny. We're going to talk over bananas. Makeup brings people <laughs> together here. Yeah. Makeup helps them make up, right? That's right. That's great. So the um, the reason for taking over is certainly sad, so I'm mm-hmm. sorry uh, you, to man. hear that. Um, how was the transition emotionally, physically? I mean, stress level higher, lower, oh. different? Oh, I, it was insane. Yeah. Insane high. Really just, intense. Yeah, really intense. Because my mom, bless her, was well, that part, an independent yeah. Yeah. and ran it, you know, up until the day she couldn't run it. Yeah. And so it was hard for her to, she was still lucid enough to know and she was losing control. So anyway, it was very stressful, but it, it eased up last year. You know, she's, yeah, yeah. it's, it, we've kind of gotten to a group. We've got great people working for us, a great team, great managers. Yeah. It's just a lot of fun. We treat people the way we always wanted to be treated. So. Yeah, we, we 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 had each of us had worked for so many yeah. really really dreadful people right. over the years <laughs> yeah. in different jobs. Not in the business, but in in nine to you know, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Not, definitely definitely not in that business. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but we uh, it, it was it's nice to have the opportunity to be the employers that we always wish we had. Yeah. So that was going to be my next thing. So it, quite a transition from um, working for someone, being an right. employee, um, to now having employees. Yeah. Was that, uh, how, other than maybe just pulling from, hey, I'm definitely not going to let that, or like, I'm not going to raise my kids like my you know, my parents, right. one of those things. Was there any other training that yeah. you all had? We did, um, we've done a lot of personal development courses, and oh. I've always been, both of us have been very entrepreneurial. Entrepreneur, I can't yep. say that word. But, uh, uh, Richard Branson has been a, a big role model. Tony Robbins. Yeah. So just kind of pulling from all that different facets and implementing it in our business yeah. and structure. Yeah, and, and also just really looking at the uh, the uh, looking at our whole group as a team. Yeah. Rather than you know as being there. you know yeah. the the employers or the boss and the workers kind of thing. We're all on one team together. Yeah. And uh, like any team, if everybody's not like performing you know really well. And, and throwing in mm-hmm. for the team, then it's just not going to succeed. Yeah. So uh, that's we're in there with them a- anywhere, you know. Yeah. Place, yeah. So what would you say were some of your um, both some of your biggest challenges and then maybe your biggest victories in in this transition to the new business? I would say the biggest challenge would be learning how to manage different things that come up with with the team members. Yeah. You know, and learning how to communicate clearly and just keep it very. Running smoothly. Yeah. Way. Yeah. And also to be able to let go a little bit. Yes. yes. Not, you know, micromanage. not to micromanage. Yes. That's, that's a classic. That's a classic <laughs> entrepreneurial error. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, when we sure. started out, I'm we still were working on it. Yeah. Totally. yeah. Absolutely. It's definitely a, a work in progress, but we come a long way with it. Yeah. Which yeah. is, you know, we feel good about Very that. Very freeing. Yeah. I mean, you went from zero to 100. If I'm yeah. understanding, right? Yeah, you, you, you didn't oh, yeah. ramp your way into that mm-hmm. business. You went like, boom, we're taking over and that's it. It was like three weeks, I think. Yeah, that's pretty. Crazy. That's pretty yeah. quick. Yeah, and and for both of us, it was like literally <laughs> the last thing that either one of us ever thought we would end up doing. <laughs> like a month earlier, you were working. You're like, yeah. hey, a month from now, we're going to be running a. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we we, we would have laughed at you. Yeah, you know, yeah. but it but it, it's. Yeah. Regardless of the circumstances, it's turned out to be this really yeah. beautiful thing. It's really yeah. it's just yeah. Been, and my mom was luckily she was able to see the growth that we've. You know, we keep expanding and building, yeah. and she was able to see it when she was still lucid, which yeah. was nice. Was so. it hard to let go of your careers? Because those were really, I mean, those are cool careers <laughs> yeah. that you had. It, you it, know, it, the timing was, yeah, the timing worked was, out. Was yeah, right. it was weird, because yeah. we were both kind of trying to figure out our plan B huh. to, you know, get out of the business, or what can yeah. we do when it's, oh. you know, yeah. yeah. It was kind of weird. Yeah, it, it, it worked out really really perfectly timing wise because uh you know court had been in that business 25 years i was in that business 30 years yeah and it was great but you get to a point where you know you want different challenges yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. yes well yeah look i've done it we've we've both done it and it was great 
and fun, Make but you know, friends. what's next? Yeah. Yeah. Frozen bananas. Frozen bananas. Exactly. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> exactly. Now, am I understanding right? You guys are, are back on set with like your truck? Yes. So what's we, that? What's yeah, that? We have a we have a mobile dipping truck, a sprinter style van. Is that new? Is that that's your, new? Yeah, yeah we've had it for uh, about 14, 13, 14 months, yeah. and uh, it's been really fun. Because yeah. uh, you know the, the thing we always loved about the industry was the people. Mm-hmm. You know, and the work was great, but it was really it, it, the whole community is a yeah. really fun community, really connected to it still, and the idea of being able to go and visit places where we used to work see or if friends. not specifically yeah. with those places exactly we get to see our friends who we used to work with yeah. and see them wearing a different hat and <laughs> and also bring you know come bearing treats which yeah. Yeah, who doesn't love that sugar yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 been really really neat yeah. um a lot of fun we did we went to the set of the rookie and blackish and grownish and a couple other ones it's been fun yeah and um, are you doing that here, even locally? Is like like yes. like In and Outs are all doing those food trucks? Is that part of your your expansion? Mm-hmm. We, yeah, we, we don't really do a lot of uh, like roundup roundup type things, but we do like uh, we last year five, for the first points. time, yeah, Five Points Amphitheater we were, okay. with Live Nation. We uh, did that a bunch of wonderful. concerts yeah. there, yeah. and that was a really great experience. Mm-hmm. The people there are so nice, so amazing, yeah. uh, and you know the community, you know, the truck community. It's like a very different. Thing. It's like a very, it, it's so specific. And, and charity events we do. We do okay. a lot of charities. We do a lot of fundraising for schools. Yes. Yeah. So it's been. Schools, sugar, and school. It's just something it's about that. We load them up with sugar and say bye bye. <laughs> they go into class. <laughs> Round up. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and you're having some special rollback. So what's what's that? Oh yeah. Oh, this is exciting. On uh, Friday, March 27th, to celebrate our 75th year, we're going to be mm-hmm. having 75 cent frozen bananas at the shop in classic chocolate, peanuts, or rainbow sprinkles, like all wow. the traditional old school. <laughs> yeah, all the old school stuff. So we're really. Uh, uh, we're really psyched for that. It'll be a great opportunity to, you know, have people come back. We also have Don Cook, oh, who nice. is the son of the uh, original owners of the shop, Dot and uh, Bob. Dot and Bob Cook, who opened Whoa. in 1945. Yeah. He's 85 years old now. 85. Two, I think. Eighty-two. 82 okay, yeah. he's eighty-two years old, and he lives in uh, Laguna Beach. And he's going to come out for that day. Yeah. And uh, he actually, the story goes, he actually invented the frozen banana on the island. His his dad, mom and dad had a, a chocolate shop, sugar and spice. And at, his dad asked him when he was twelve years old yeah. to put the bananas in the refrigerator. He accidentally put it in the freezer. The next day, he was like. Pulled it out, and his dad's like, yeah, I told you the refrigerator. And he's like, oh, well, let's put in some fudge. And so they created, he's the inventor of frozen banana. we got to get that person in here. We yes, we do. Don Cook is amazing. Wow. He's an amazing, amazing guy. He's amazing. Yeah. He's a, a, a lovely, fun guy. <laughs> he and uh, he's going to come <laughs> out. Him and the family are going to come out and yeah. uh, enjoy the, the day. Yeah. It'll be neat. Does he get like a, a nickel for every frozen yeah, right, residual exactly. across the world? <laughs> residual here. Exactly. <laughs> you probably missed that copyright. <laughs> Somebody wah, wah. tweeted in and wants to know what did the island look like in 1945, or even when? When oh. did your mom take over? Or even when did? My, yeah, my mom took over in '95. But okay. but Dot um, when Don, Don was telling when, us, yeah, yeah it, Don was saying there was, much there. No, there was nothing. There was nothing there. A dirt hill or so the dirt. Yeah, right? they literally bought the lot. That where the shop is and the home behind it, yeah. they literally purchased it for four hundred dollars. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yes, in right? nineteen forty-five, and, and yeah, what's it was the kind building of amazing. story? The building, yeah, yeah, they uh, it was you know uh, nineteen forty-five, so the war was still you know oh, it's yeah. just about to end, uh, but there were no building materials, so they got like a prefab <laughs> home that they had transported over there, and uh, and then the. Uh, I guess uh, Bob Cook had the idea to take the garage and instead of putting it behind the house, put it on the street and make a shop. And there it was. Uh, and that was the, and that's how. <laughs> Is that's that the first Gen- shop of the, of the entire street? I don't know. Well, there was a couple, the couple. church was the there. Church. Okay, and okay. there were a couple of other things on the block. Yeah. But it was, uh, yeah. it, it was very sparsely populated. Wow. Wow, so, that's a great story. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. He. It was really neat because uh, when Don came down, he went for a walk with him all around the island, yeah. and he would just through Tell his stories, eyes, he would yeah. point out all these really cool wow. things. This was this. That was yeah. that. He grew up in the house behind the shop, so yeah. it was neat. That's really yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. 
All right, Courtney. Okay. Give us a good story. Good story. Good okay. celebrity story. Okay, a quick one. The best one, well, my best experience with all of them were great on the yeah. shows, but yeah. the best one was working with Donnie for the seven years. He yeah. and Brooks, his hairdresser at the time, uh, the three of us were just, we bonded and had a great time, lots of laughs. And it was my interview, my first time working with him. And it was when he had had that accident in Hawaii with his neck. And he had... Um, he had broken his neck. He bro- yeah, Body so there surfing. was... Scar- he was oh, healing right, still. Right, right. Yeah. And it was like clear tape or clear bandage. Yeah. So I had to remove it. And he was... Yeah, I was so nervous because I was like, you know, Donny Os- <laughs> Osmond. I was a little Osmond. rock and roll when I was a kid. Yeah. I had the posters. So he was so nice. And I'm I'm taking it off gently with scissors or tweezers or something. Yeah. And anyway, he, he goes, ow! And I jumped... So far back, I thought I had cut him, and he started laughing. And from that point on, oh, we were just with, yeah. yeah, yeah. He is just he is the real deal. Yeah. He's a great, great, great human being. And how about Jerry fun. and Jason? Uh, okay, so Jerry, don't burst my bubble. Uh, think... No, they were really nice. Okay, I good. met them. I worked on Greg Kinnear's talk show uh-huh. uh, later with Greg Kinnear. Yeah, and that's when I met um, both of them. Okay. They came on as guests, and they were super nice. They're all friendly. three funny as hell. Oh, so funny. Yeah. So it was just it was the great yeah yeah they were really right. great. All right, well, you got to have one or two. Um, okay. Well, like the, meltdowns, the, any celebrity meltdowns? or I, <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know about that, but I, I, I will say that uh, when I worked on uh, CSI May- Miami, and that was like the, uh, the show I've worked on the longest, I did five seasons on that. Yeah. It was a very interesting process there because uh, the, the star of the show, David Caruso, was sort of like the 800-pound gorilla there. Yeah, and that's right. And he would, yeah, and so mm-hmm. like, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd show up at set, and the writers had spent weeks and weeks honing a script, and uh, and then all the guest stars who were coming in to, to film, you know, they'd be studying their script, and they'd show up on set ready to shoot and know every word, every nuance, this and that. And David Crusoe would show up early in the morning and go into his trailer with the script and literally rewrite <laughs> Every scene he was in, <laughs> so literally, like, 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 almost perfect. no words remained. <laughs> so it, it was always, you know, really kept you on your toes. Yeah, because you know they come to set and you had no idea really what was going to happen. He had creative rights to do that, or, or I don't know how that ho- works in Hollywood. But... Um, he was the star of the show, he was and, one on the and, call and sheet. Okay. yeah, number one on the call sheet, and okay. and he, yeah, and they yeah. they wanted to keep him yeah. happy and engaged. Wow. So it was, uh, but it made it really, uh, yeah. it, it really kept everybody on toes. I felt bad for the guest actors because you know, these are people who like this was like their shot, yeah. and they came and they were ready. You know, they were just ready for everything. Yeah. And then you know, right before you're going to roll camera, you're like, oh uh, yeah, none of that's going to happen. Wow. <laughs> and this is what it all is now. So what you know what I remember about him was he was a great actor on there, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and I don't know about his reputation, but I, I, maybe it was a negotiating thing, and he didn't make it back. But then I never see saw no. him again ever. Yeah, I didn't. Does anyone know what happened? No, <laughs> uh, I think he's still out there. Yeah, he also was. Uh, he did art. Yeah. That was a oh, thing okay. of his, yeah. and. He had a woman's clothing store actually in between gigs. He was a big star. He I forgot to show what was the uh, cr- the uh, um, cop show. Oh, NYPD oh, Blue. Yeah. NYPD Blue. Right. And then he either left or walked or whatever. Or maybe and that was the disappeared show he walked away from. He walked away from it, and he really was out of acting. And he, yeah. uh, I remember reading he owned a woman's clothing store, and then got this gig on CSI in Miami. It was like back from the grave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, it. so I got my timing off. So okay. that was that. Then he fell. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, I, a lot of times I ask, "What's your guilty pleasure?" I, I don't think I have to ask you guys. That's probably something <laughs> to do. With sure. be, yeah, anything but bananas. Anything. <laughs> Strawberry shortcake. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the things that I do have the honor of asking is your ultimate lesson learned. Yes. So in your time, and actually just in your career, so it could be any part of it or your transition, mm-hmm. um, and maybe you have the same, maybe you have different. But what would you say is your ultimate lesson learned? My ultimate lesson learned would be um, to keep unlearning what I've learned. So I'm always evolving and whatever what I thought would work sometimes doesn't work and being flexible into, you know, creating new ways of being or doing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a great so. one. How about you, Will? Anything different? Like going from makeup to bananas. That's exactly. Like there you go. Right? <laughs> Who knew? Well, my, mine would be, in line with that, it would be that uh, it's never too late to start anew. And to really uh, don't be afraid to uh, to make big, really big changes in your life, <laughs> and uh, and and really to to create the lo- you know the the life that you've yeah. dreamed of 
<laughs> and uh, yeah. and that just because you know you're, you're set in a certain way and you've been doing something for a long time, you know, while you're alive, it, it's only too late when you're dead. Yeah, there you go. Huh. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, how can people um, everybody knows you are except for Paul so let everybody know where you're at or how they can reach you you guys have um, all social media presence and yes everything. we do so Instagram and Facebook it's uh, yeah Sugar and Spice uh, NB so okay. like for Newport Beach yeah. both on Instagram and Facebook and then um, our website is www.sugar, the letter N is in Nancy Spice, okay. balboaisland.com. We were, we were going to go <laughs> with like a, a, a long <laughs> email address and a yeah. long uh, website. Yeah. website, but we decided to keep it succinct like that. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and then lastly, what's next? Anything other than what we've talked about, your rollback yeah. and all the well, other stuff? Anything? We have lots of plans and lots of building. We're yeah, we have we have uh, lots of fun stuff. We're gonna I think we're gonna go back to Five Points Amphitheater mm-hmm. this summer for more okay. concerts. Uh, we've got a visit that we're not quite sure of the date yet, but stay tuned. Check out the website. Uh, we're gonna have the big banana the car big banana is gonna car. be coming to the island, <laughs> which is this it's this crazy whimsical <laughs> thing. It was built on like a truck body, and it's like this so like twenty five foot. Yeah, it, it's like that, yeah. but it's just this we'll enormous banana. It's oh, a thing of beauty, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna have it come to the show. And, and give kids rides, and uh, who owns that? Where is this? Uh, it, it's uh, it's these guys by the they call themselves the Mutant Brothers from Kalamazoo, <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> oh, well, anybody from come from Michigan, anybody okay. from Kalamazoo, yeah, Kazoo, there that would be a little mutant anyway here right? on the western side of the state. There, so yeah. they're going to bring this giant banana shaped car. Okay. Yeah. They sure are. This guy Steve Braithwaite is is the fellow who who built it, and uh, he's going to he's bring literally it driving it. It's on its way right now. <laughs> he's uh, driving right. from. Michigan. Michigan. Yes. It, yes, right now I think he's in. <laughs> banana. I think he's in Marfa, Texas, or Austin, Texas, right now, Crazy. working his way west and uh, just making a stopping in like every town in between, and uh, on his way to us. So I think we got to get excited. a picture of Bart in the car because Bart's yes. a real car guy. Oh, right. oh, automobile. We'll make it happen. An automobile. An automobile. <laughs> we'll get you. We'll get you and Tina in there. Yeah. All right. We like. Yeah. Reminiscent for. Yeah. That's that's go. awesome. That'll be your date night. You can go yeah. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, honey, uh, I got a surprise. <laughs> hey, I want. Hey, Paul, I wanted to revisit. So last yeah. uh, week I started for the new year, kind of closing with a quote. And I actually want to revisit the quote because I want to make sure it was interpreted properly. Do you remember the first of all, do you remember the quote, Paul? You liked it. I remember I liked it. I don't remember what Discipline. it was. Discipline. Oh, yes, right. To yeah. do things other, the ability to do things that others won't do so that you can have a, a Mm-hmm. That can't do so other, so you can have what others won't have. You don't have the discipline to tell it the right the second yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But my point of that was I didn't want it to sound like it was just for like tangible things, like hey, you're going to work real hard and get all this money and get this thing, which is all true. But I think there's other aspects of it, like from a health standpoint, hey, the discipline to eat right and spend a little, do a little exercise to have health that right. others may not have or. You know, have date night with your wife so you have a good relationship or spend time with your kids. So the things that others won't do. But, you know, I was in the entertainment industry many years ago as they were on a different field. I was an entertainment publicist. And the people I saw that succeeded in that field are the people that live by your model. They wanted it more than ever. Lots of talent just got mm-hmm. you in the game. The people that made it to the top are those that wanted it and yep. did what others wouldn't do. The extra hours, the extra networking, the extra effort, uh, whatnot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I want to thank you both so thank much. It's been really fun. Hey, thank and you so much. Reminiscent. Thanks for us. Yeah, great. I uh, look forward to being back in the studio next week. Cheers. <laughs> you caught me by surprise here. I'm doing nope. the uh, thing here. All right, here we go. That was a really Tune in next week for the latest edition of the Zanbergen Report, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Catch up on our recent shows by visiting bartzanbergen.podbean.com. The Zanbergen Report is also available on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Interested in being a featured guest on our show or have a question you'd like to hear us answer? Email podcast at bartzanbergen.com. Bart A. Zanbergen, CFP, and Letitia Burbaum, AIF, are registered investment advisors with Optivist, Inc., and registered representatives with Gramercy Securities, Inc., member FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services are offered by Optivist, Inc., under SEC registration.